Beto, she's given her point of view. But let's take you back to Midrand, where our reporter, Masha Kokomani, is sitting down with the Basic Education Minister, Angie Mutsaha. Masha Yes, and we are in, indeed joined by the Minister of Basic Education, Ms. Angie Mucheh, and she's just going to tell us, you know, just having announced um, the work of the class of 2019, 81,3%, um, um, an increase from 2018, a 3,1 uh, percentage point increase from then. Um, you know, there were many announcements that were made in the speech, uh, Minister. I think let's just go straight to it. Um, but what we also noticed with the, with the stats that we did receive or the numbers that we received from the department is, are you not concerned with the mathematics? There's, there's less learners taking pure maths, not necessarily maths literacy, but also there's a decrease in the amount of learners that you are having passing um, the subjects because it, it is part of the department's plan um, to increase the passes, not only in bachelor's, but in physical science as well as maths. No, we are quite concerned. When we were analyzing the results, we picked up, for instance, one of our biggest crises around accounting. We have less less students year after year. Uh, take accounting as a subject mm -hmm. and because we had linked accounting to maths then you find that most learners were losing learners to, in accounting in maths we have introduced maths te technical maths yes. so we're losing some of the kids who are going to be doing maths for kids who are going to be doing technical subjects or going to go into engineering they're taking they're going opting for technical maths so and that's the other shift so whilst we are supposed to be or we wish to increase the numbers from the bottom to make sure that half of our learners take maths we really the needle seems not to be moving yes. so even those that were losing to technical maths it's not fresh students who would who would not have taken maths before so which means we are taking from the very limited a, a, a pool that we have so it is a matter of concern and we it's one of the areas that we have flagged that we have to look into and see how we support learners more and more we've done lots of things we've entered with for instance with the hope to increase the number of learn a, a, a maths learners we have made sure that every school has a maths teacher so that we've achieved We've made sure that every learner doing maths and physical science have textbooks so we still have to really understand and, and, and I think our analysis also tells us it's weaker foundations. Yes. That by the time children go to grade 10, their they, 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 they math skills are too weak to enable them to take maths at 10, 11, and 12. So what we've decided is that we are going to ramp from the bottom and make sure that from grade 1, we strengthen our mathematical skills and we think we'll then have a healthy throughput. So it's not something which will translate immediately, but we think that's one of the key solutions that we have to make sure that we improve the teaching of maths in lower grades. And also, you know, it's, it's not necessarily also maths, but it's your, your gateway subjects that are seem, they seem to really be suffering. You're not making as much headway there as, as you, I suppose you, you wish you would like, for, you did say accounting, and um, as well as, as physical science. While it has shown a slight increase in terms of the pass, the, part, the number of candidates that have passed it, but those that are actually taking it have also decreased. No, as I say, it's, it's a pull because learners who take maths take physical science. So if you're going to have a decline in maths, that has a knock effect on accounting, has a knock effect on, on also on, on, on physical science. So if we improve the pipeline in maths, it's going to improve the pipeline because learners will not want to take physical science without maths. Mm -hmm. And we had made, we had linked maths and accounting, so they won't take accounting if they're not taking maths. So which means the solution is us ramping up the performance and the participation in maths, then the other subjects will follow. And also, I think we also had this conversation as well, last year as well and this year that there is, seems to be a decrease of the numbers of uh, candidates that actually sit for the National Senior Certificate. What do you attribute this to? Have you also began the process of tracking your, your learners, those that start grade one? Because we understand that today's 20, class of 19, um, 2019 is the children that started um, grade one in 2008. No, that's what we do on an ongoing basis. Even researchers that report on the dropout rates. They get statistics from us. Those were the only ones who are keeping records of, of, of statistics. So every year, January, February, we issue what we call education realities. And those education realities tell us where we're experiencing dropout rates, at which grades. So it's something that is part of the system, that monitoring. And we can confirm that it's 
after grade nine that we really lose lots of children for different reasons it's your youth delinquency it's, it's parenting but it's also academic performance again when they come with weak foundations they find it difficult to cope with courses with subject in the FET phase. So we're dealing with those that are educational. We're working with partners like social development to support uh, 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 learners uh, who, I mean, if you go here to meet my constituents, half of those learners are staying by themselves with their mothers are mainly domestic workers. There's parenting problem. There's there, 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 there are just no parents to support and supervise kids. And that's why we have to work with other departments. It leads to a number of things, your youth delinquency, and just children just finding it difficult to cope on their own. So those are some of the reasons. But the good reason why, the, I think the good analysis, which I think is good news, it's the fact that we're cleaning the system. There's less repeaters in the system. And that's why the numbers are declining. In the past, we used to have learners who are repeating metric three times. So the idea of statistics is artificial. It's kids who have been in the system. So if you say you have 500 kids, when 500,000, 100,000 are repeaters, it's just not a good indication. So we had lots of repeaters. We also had, yes, numbers. Our analysis is that even from the admissions, in grade one, the like the, the the birth rates in the country are also reducing. So if you track what we have, because what we get in at grade twelve, it's what we received in grade one. So if we have less registrations at grade one, we're likely to have less registrations at grade twelve, and that's what is happening in the system. So there are less uh, the, 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 the the birth yeah the birth rates are reducing, which is I think it's a healthy it's, it's quite healthy for young girls to really have controlled and yes, this small is smaller families. Yes, and also maybe I think Minister to talk just quickly, I mean the bachelor pass obviously is your indication of the quality, one of the indications that you'll have. Are you happy with what you're finding? We are seeing an, a, a gradual increase uh, in terms of the learners that do qualify uh, for higher education or tertiary education. Are you happy with that? But maybe also perhaps I know that with the introduction of the, the general education um, certificate you were saying that the argument from the department was that not everybody is necessarily going to follow that route of tertiary level. What inroads are you making there? No, and it's good that you're raising it. The reality of the fact in the world, we're one of the few systems that will allow kids to come up grade one and only assess them in a standard manner after 12 years. It doesn't happen. Go to all neighboring countries. They do assess kids at the end of basic education. And this was the policy of the ruling party, and there's a white paper on it since 1995. We've not implemented that policy, so it's not anything new. Because there were lots of challenges, the curriculum, the, the, the system was very unstable, and we had to lo do lots of work as a country. We've reached a point where we think the system has stabilized, and therefore we can do the right things we need to do. So the GEC is the right thing to do, because what we say, it's not every child anywhere in the world who goes into your academic stream. So we're strengthening the architecture of the system to say there must be streaming. I mean, Germany, for instance, only 40% of their kids go to academic, the next go to vocational and technical. I can, you, any country, France, they, they, they have to persuade kids to go to academic. In the country, we expect 100% of our kids to go academic, and that's why we have a huge blockage in, at university systems. So what we are trying to do as a country is to open pathways, and we normally, everywhere, you path them after they finish their basic education, so that they either go to the academic, to FET, they can go to vocational, or they, go to, they can go to technical. And that's the reason we're having this three stream, and that's why we want to certificate them at the GEC. So we're going to pilot, we've started with items, which is it's a very important system. It has financial implications, we have to speak to Treasury, but we have to get everybody on board to know that this is the world practice in education. We're one of the few countries, maybe America and very few. And America, there's a reason, they have a federal system of education, so they don't have a national assessment. 
And I think maybe just, Minister, I know you have a busy night ahead no, of you. Okay. Um, you, you. You've gotten 81.3% um, for the class of 2019. Um, we spoke to um, one of the unions, I think, Tosa earlier on, saying that they feel soon enough it's going to reach the ceiling. What are your projections going forward? What do you in, what do you want to see? You've spoken about opening up the various streams to ensure that all children that enter um, education, the basic education system in South Africa, are catered for. When Aptosa is right, 80% for a system as big as ours, it's not child's play. It's, it's a major, I mean, if you can see the effort that is put into making sure that we get your unions, everybody, your private sector, parents, communities, you can reach a ceiling if you think you can still do the same things the same way. What we've diagnosed with MECs, we have to ramp up the foundation. We have to get the ECD system in place, it has the biggest returns. If we get ECD right, we get the foundation and the intermediate phase, we will be able to sustain the 80% or even move the 80% up. But it is a very I think, dangerous level for a system as big as ours. Okay. And thank you so much, uh, Minister, for that. And you've heard the ATP, so the Minister of Basic Education, Mr. Angel, Mrs. Angel himself, was just telling us that, um, you know, it, it, the 81%, the 81.3% 81 pass rate of the class of 2019, exciting news indeed, um, quite exciting, showing that the work that they've put in is beginning to pay off, but also saying that there's lots more to be done, considering what's been happening, the numbers that we have in terms of your gateway subjects, saying um, the ECD, the, the introduction of the ECD into basic education, we know it was with social development, hoping that uh, when by the time children actually reach that higher level, they've got the necessary foundation to ensure that those subjects, they're able to cope, they have a better understanding of those subjects, so the children do not uh, find themselves meeting those subjects at a level where they can no longer cope. And it's back to you in studio. Stand by. Atlako, thank you very much. Let's continue our conversations. We're joined by organizations. Uh